Hello and uh, welcome uh, to Life's Magical Journeys. This is Rajiv Nalawadi. Today we'll go to Switzerland and in fact another country as well, which I will uh, introduce later on in this uh, in this video. So Switzerland, essentially our uh, drive um, in this country took us to Oberal Oberalp uh, Pass and this was way back in the early 2000s. So this is uh, a pass which connects to the town of uh, Andermatt and uh, it's south of Lucerne and very near to Matterhorn. And uh, while you're driving along this uh, pass, you will see a lot of uh, railway tunnels. Uh, and essentially, they are heading towards uh, the Matterhorn. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the Matterhorn uh, Godhard uh, railway uh, that runs through it. And you'll see like a lot of uh, a lot of cars that are sitting on the uh, on the bed of the trains, uh, train bogies that are uh, that are uh, going through. So we. Uh, drove through this Oberal Pass uh, uh, during summer. It's open only during summer. There are a lot of bikers on this uh, on this pass, and there are rails transporting vehicles, as I mentioned. And uh, it's also the birthplace of uh, Rhine River. So if you get a chance, uh, do go to this uh, place, which is uh, Andermatt, and you have to go through Oberal Pass, and it's uh, connecting uh, different towns essentially. Uh, I forget the name of the town now uh, as to what, what town is connecting to Andromeda. So it, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, drive, actually. So uh, being the early 2000s, uh, not the digital photography time, this is me. And uh, in the previous, uh, it was my wife's picture in Oberalp Pass. So we're not so good, we're not so savvy in uh, taking um, uh, taking any videos for, you know, for that matter. So there were there was no videos. It was like a camcorder era, and uh, just photos, whatever you click, come back and then uh, get it get it processed at uh, uh, at your favorite uh, place here in the town. So uh, this is me in the Oberalp Pass. So uh, some more pictures of uh, the family, my two uh, young boys in uh, Matterhorn, uh, Zermatt, and Lotte Brunen, uh, and Wengen, uh, a beautiful place that we enjoyed. So there are a lot of car-free cities in, uh, in Switzerland. So we loved the train rides uh, around in Switzerland. So I, uh, it was one time that I could park my car and take off on the on the trains so you it's wonderful to do that in switzerland with all the beauty that is surrounding you there are chalet filled resorts uh, of zermatt uh, sitting directly below matterhorn and i had to leave my car uh, at tash uh, when when i went to uh, when i went to see matterhorn so hopped on the corner guard uh, uh, railway with our baggages. There is a lot of uh, bikes and ski gear that are taking the ride to this mountain town as well. And another train ride, memorable one, is the train journey to Umfra. Uh, it takes you through Wengen and uh, Grindelwald, uh, the Klein Shed Egg, uh, as it's climbing up through Umfra, uh, Umfra York. And uh, uh, at the top, it's uh, it's beautiful, beautiful scenery. And another uh, a train, or a, rather a tram ride that we took was to the village of Gimmelwald. Uh, so that's also a car-free uh, town at the top of the hill, surrounded by alpine uh, beauty, all the Alps uh, surrounding you when you when you visit Gimmelwald. So there is also like, uh, uh, and uh, we are film buffs, uh, both Hollywood and Bollywood as well, and a lot of foreign films uh, that we watch uh, whenever we get a chance. Uh, yes, Chopra, who was a renowned director, his statue is there in Kursal Park uh, in, in Interlaken. Uh, so from Interlaken, you take the train journey to Umfra York. So it was wonderful to see a tribute uh, from the Swiss people to this uh, director who brought Switzerland to the big screen. So there is a lot of Bollywood movies that are shot in uh, Switzerland during uh, you know, when he was directing and also when his son started directing as well. So today we'll be covering a Swiss author uh, by name Pascal uh, Mercier. 
Pascal Mercier was uh, born in uh, uh, in Bern uh, in 1944, and uh, he used uh, Pascal Mercier as a pseudonym. His name was actually Peter Berry, and uh, Berry uh, pursued like an academic career uh, that. Uh, ventured into the world uh, before he ventured into the world of fiction, fiction writing. All his, uh, all his first, even before his first novel, he uh, uh, he had uh, studied in UK, Switzerland, and uh, earned a doctorate with thesis on philosophy of time. So his main focus was uh, uh, philosophy as well as philology. So you'll see a lot of philology, uh, uh, philology elements within within his writing so it's wonderful wonderful read uh, for any of his novels so uh Beery specialized in philosophy so that's uh, an area uh, where he put a lot of focus even within his novels so it's an exploration a self-exploration of the journey that we all have and uh, uh it's uh, it's really uh, it resonates a lot within a lot of his novels and uh, uh, really this uh, philosophical writing combined with some fiction it kind of uh, you know it kind of pulled me into reading a lot of his novels so uh, the first uh, novel that i read was the night train to lisbon and uh, it is starring jeremy irons so i read the uh, novel and then in the evening uh, i told my wife i read a beautiful novel we should really watch if there is a film so after reading the novel all through the day uh, in the evening i got to spend uh, time with my wife to watch this movie uh, night train to lisbon and uh, it's a beautiful novel and a beautiful movie <laughs> as well with uh, jeremy irons so do uh, read as well as uh, watch the watch the movie if you get a chance so the story actually centers around uh, Raymond uh, Gregorius, uh, or he's referred to as Mun Mundus as well. Uh, he's rather a very unassuming and a reserved character. He teaches uh, Latin at a Swiss secondary school. So uh, on one morning on his way to the office uh, or to the school, uh, he's disrupted uh, when he notices a woman um, on the bridge in Bern. And the woman is perched on the railings of the bridge, uh, almost tilting uh, towards, uh, like as if or she's going to fall. So Gregorius suspects that she's going to commit suicide and pulls her to safety. He drops all his, uh, all, all the things that he's carrying and uh, goes in and saves uh, this woman. So the woman walks uh, with him uh, to the school. And as soon as uh, Gregorius starts uh, the, uh, starts like uh, the class uh, she uh, walks out and disappears leaving her coat behind and uh, this sort of encounter intrigues uh, intrigues Raymond or Gregorius to uh, it leads him to a book uh, on Amadeo di Prado so what he finds in the coat pocket and ultimately uh, he goes and finds this book by Amadeo uh, de Prado, and he was a Portuguese doctor and an essayist. So, um, uh, an amazing uh, literal prose that uh, is is uh, brought together in this particular novel. And even the movie, uh, it's amazing when you see the quotes uh, coming through. It, I could immediately because I watched it the same day the movie as well as reading the novel. Uh, it it will it has stayed with me uh, for for a long time and uh, it something like uh, like gregorius also reads in amadeo di prado uh, and it uh, it sort of uh, stirs something deep within within him and uh, he's captivated by uh, the philosophical depth and insight of amadeo uh, who's a character in this uh, in this novel and uh, he Gregorius impulsively, uh, he decides to take the train, abandon his life in Switzerland and take the train. So that's uh, the title, the night train to Lisbon. So he goes on a journey to Lisbon to learn more about this uh, enigmatic author, uh, Amadeo de Prado. And upon his arrival, like uh, um, basically Gregorius or Mundus as uh, his students call him, um, he begins to piece together the life of Amadio Prado and through the conversations uh, with uh, various people 
around him. And uh, a lot of the people that he talks around, uh, it brings in more of Prado's character, his uh, struggles, his moral dilemmas. And uh, Prado was also involved in the resistance against the Salazar dictator dictatorship. And it, this novel is uh, set around that uh, timeline and uh, his deep friendships and contemplations and how his interactions work with his friends and uh, how he uh, yearns for freedom from the dictatorship. All of these are uh, brought together in this novel and pieced together wonderfully. So sort of each discovery as uh, Gregorius goes around uh, piecing Prado's life together, uh, there is a lot of you know self uh, questions he questions about his life and there is universal questions haunting the human existence so he delves deeper deeper and deeper and uh, he connects with his uh, sister uh, prado's sister and uh, ultimately to all the fellow uh, resistors who were friends during during that timeline of prado and uh, also uh, some lover uh, so that's the theme i'll not give out so these connections sort of form a very beautiful beautiful mosaic of stories that uh, reveal the multifaceted nature of prados and uh, and what was his life about and the thought so now this kind of challenges Gregorius to reflect on his own choices, beliefs, and uh, the paths that he has not taken till now in his life. So uh, it, it, it has a profound impact on him. And uh, it also talks about how uh, we, a single moment that we miss, or some decision that we make, or something that we encounter in this course of life, what a profound impact each one of them has on our life. And uh, it's about uh, the different experiences that we go through life. So it uh, it is sort of an enduring quest. So to find that connection or understanding. And uh, also it's about trying to discover the unknown, right? And that's where the magic is. So all the journeys are uh, magical because we are all trying to unravel uh, what what is that unknown and what is that next step and uh, and and that's what makes it beautiful so the night train now uh, to lisbon is not a, just a journey in a timeline uh, through europe but it's also a journey into the soul so it beautifully interviews these uh, themes of language uh, that that is used in this particular novel and invites the reader to um, ponder on the weight of history and uh, the nature of uh, human relationships or the quest for meaning and all this uh, uh, in each one of our lives that we that we lead so it's a very transformative uh, journey that uh, Mercier takes you along, and he's very eloquent and uh, a wonderful piece of literature, I would say. And uh, this is one of the novels where uh, he is a Swiss author, but he's writing about uh, the history of Portugal during Salazar's uh, dictatorship. And there is a connection between the woman that uh, he saves on the bridge and uh, how uh, the connection goes back uh, into uh, into uh, connecting it with Salazar himself. So, uh, and also uh, uh, Gregorius gets to meet uh, the lover of uh, Amadio Prado, which is a very interesting line of uh, story within the novel. So it invites the reader to discover their own uh, selves and uh, through a process of inquiry, essentially. So uh, there are other uh, couple of uh, Pascal Mercier novels that I read after I got done with uh, uh, The Night Train to Lisbon. I was intrigued to find out what other novels has uh, Pascal Mercier written. Pearl Moons, Silence, and Leah were the other two novels that I have read. And I will make a separate video on these two novels. Uh, Pearl Moons, Silence, centers around the conference uh, and uh, um, silence during the conference for a keynote uh, speaker is uh, is interesting, right? So that's the theme of that story. And Leah is a wonderful story of a father and daughter's uh, love and affection. So I'll bring these two novels in a separate video. So uh, uh, for now, if you like 
like uh, the video and want to see more videos like this uh, do subscribe to the youtube channel life's magical journeys and uh, also go and subscribe and follow on the other socials the facebook instagram and uh, linkedin where there are different uh, uh, stories and content that i put out there so it's all different uh, all these four socials i have different content so do go and subscribe uh, to uh, all these uh, socials that's it for now and uh, see you soon bye